Hello, Kaiju lovers! I'm Nate Marchand, the host and curator of the Monster Island Film Vault, a podcast seeking entertainment and enlightenment through tokusatsu. And that's my intrepid producer, Jimmy from NASA, who survived the infamous war in space, but he still won't tell me how. You keep saying that, but one of these days, man, I'm gonna figure it out. That's not why I'm here, though. This special little episode is to participate in One Monstrous Moment Alpha Edition, which is being put on by my most recent guest, Ryan, the Omniviewer Collins. It's where kaiju YouTubers, as Omni puts it, wax poetic about their favorite moment from any kaiju media. That's true, Jimmy. I'm a podcaster, not a YouTuber. And I admit if I wasn't so busy this week with Godzilla vs. Kong opening, I'd have made a proper video where viewers could see me. I have the perfect face for radio. Have you looked in the mirror? I know you haven't aged since the war in space, which only compounds the mystery! Ugh. Anyway, kaiju lovers, I hope the thumbnail for this video and the content of what I have to say will suffice. You may be surprised by what I selected for my one monstrous moment. It's not from a Godzilla film, but an Ultra series. But not any of the ones you'd expect. In fact, it's from one that most Ultra fans criticize. But it remains the only live action Ultra series ever made in the United States. <laughs> Ultraman, the ultimate hero, a.k.a. Ultraman Powered. While it does have its issues, chief among them, its subpar fight choreography due to great-looking but dangerously fragile suits, the titular Ultraman was, as far as I know, the first one in the franchise to show compassion to the monsters he fought. He does this in several episodes. For example, in Episode 3, he keeps Red King from committing suicide when he tries to throw himself down a cliff after his mate falls to her death. It's noted that Red King's mate for life. In the surprisingly good Episode 6, Jamara, who possessed a human astronaut to wreak havoc, allows himself to be killed by a reluctant Ultraman powered to save the astronaut's daughter and the world. I bring this up to say that, unlike Ultraman Cosmos, Howard won't hesitate to kill a monster when he has to, but he's also quick to show mercy when necessary. This brings me to episode 11, Dynomite. Yes, as in dinosaur and mighty. In this, Gomorrah is brought to LA after being found frozen in the Andes Mountains. Predictably, he escapes after being revived by rain. Winner, the show's science patrol, consults with Dr. Hasegawa, who tells them that Gomura is an amphibious dinosaur who lived in wetlands and is now searching for a new habitat before he dehydrates. Winner decides to capture the dinosaur alive and implements a plan wherein they tranquilize Gomura and airlift him with what look like giant arms from a claw machine. Maybe they did get those parts for the model from real claw machines. As I was saying, Winter transports Gomera, but he awakens and while struggling, gets shot free by Winter pilot Sanders. Gomera lands in a suburban neighborhood and starts trashing it in a daze. It's then that Kenichi Kai henshins into Ultraman power to confront Gomera, but he doesn't try to hurt the monster. He knocks Gomera over, but the monster is too weak from dehydration to stand again. Life wheezes out of Gomera's dry throat. Howard, despite his wailing color timer, comes around and cradles the monster like a cowboy would a dying horse. This isn't something I expected to see the first time I watched it. Heck, it's a popular joke that Showa Ultra men were often ruthless kaiju killers. My gosh, Taro killed a monster just because it had a toothache! But here, Powered fights a truly innocent monster. 
He was buried alive millions of years ago and revived in a world he doesn't know or understand. All he wanted was a place to live so he could survive. The problem was now the world was populated by tiny humans, and because he kept smashing their houses, something had to be done. Sanders arguably defies orders and fires on Gomorrah, releasing him from the claw, claiming there was radio interference. He'd always shown disdain for monsters and insisted on shooting them first. He represents the typical human response to anything that threatens them. Dr. Hasegawa, on the other hand, makes remarks during the episode like, I wish we'd never found Gomorrah, and this second chance at life is just too much for him. To Dr. Hasegawa, it would have been better for Gomorrah to remain dead than to die again so soon after revival. Kai makes a similar statement at the end of the episode when Gomorrah's body is put on display in a museum. Monster? Maybe to him, you're the monsters. This punctuates the episode with an indictment of the human heroes. Despite their good intentions, they still try to capture or kill a confused creature who meant no harm. The entire episode embodies a famous quotation from director Ishira Honda, who said, Monsters are tragic beings. They are born too tall, too strong, too heavy. They are not evil by choice. That is their tragedy. They do not attack people because they want to, but because of their size and strength, mankind has no other choice but to defend himself. After several stories such as this, people end up having a kind of affection for the monsters. They end up caring about them. And that is what Ultraman Power does. He knows it's too late to save Gomorrah. He could hasten Gomorrah's death, but instead he halts the monster's rampage to keep him from inflicting more damage. Then he comforts the creature who didn't have to die again in his final moments. You may have heard the phrase, hurting people hurt people. The same could be said about Gomorrah, who was hurting people due to his confusion and thirst. It doesn't excuse what he did, but by treating Gomorrah like a malicious monster, Winner snuffed out an innocent life. However, Powered, in a strange way, saves Gumara by giving him a moment of peace before dying. You could even say he loved his enemy, which, given that Ultraman creator Eiji Tsuburaya was a rare Japanese Catholic, wouldn't be much of a stretch. If Powered can do that for a monster, we can do the same for the monsters in our own lives. I'll end by paraphrasing retired reporter Steve Martin from Godzilla 1985. For now, Gomorrah, that strangely innocent and tragic monster, has gone to Earth. Whether he returns or not, or is never seen again by human eyes, the things he has taught us remain. Jimmy, did you have to buzzkill my ending? Of course I know Gomera came back in later Ultra series. Heck, he's here on the freaking island! Fact check, schmack check. <sighs> anyway, if you enjoyed this, please check out our other episodes. We covered all the Kong films last season and are, much to my chagrin, plowing through the Gamera series this season as part of the Year of Gamera. Because apparently the Monster Island Board of Directors, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to declare Gamera king of the monsters. Yeah, that's gone over well with a couple of other certain kaiju who have a new movie coming out. And be sure to watch the other videos in Omni's One Monstrous Moment Alpha Edition playlist. Sayonara! Sayonara!